Welcome to our bonus Destiny 2 podcast from Two Titans and a Hunter. We couldn't fit in all our ramblings into one episode this week, so enjoy. Did you want to do the intro? Did you want to say that you were joined by me and Stupid oh, Face? Oh, I don't care. But yes, I'm doing that one. Joined by Night Demon and Stupid Face. <laughs> <laughs> on reddit this week there was a post went up from a reddit user jm dubs entitled bungie i can't defend you anymore you're doing this to yourself and i thought it'd be quite interesting to look at uh some of the points that he's made let's read them let's read them verbatim respawn <laughs> go are we really going to read out all these angry twitter posts is that a thing <laughs> Welcome back to Crackdown 3 Talk Skills for Kills, Agent Skills for Kills So basically, I'm reading from this article, right? It says, so, let's get this all out on the table First thing, no trials until at least after September Since it's worded the next few seasons Can't really arbitrate what that means But we're guesstimating around September I'd like to remind everyone This is a piece of vanilla D2 content That I have taken away and not replaced Meaning, when you bought the game, you bought this content. It came with it. Everybody got it, and now nobody has it. Point number two, no faction rallies or updates about it. Again, vanilla D2 content that has been taken away from us, right? And there hasn't been a replacement for faction rallies. I mean, you could argue maybe Iron Banner or something like that, but that's its own thing, right? Faction rallies, gone. Finito. We need more space calls. Right, like 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 more cowbell, but cowbell is space cough. We need more. We we need more space cough. Right, so that was actually fun, dude. It's like what the hell, dude? Like like why would you take it away for so long? Why? Yeah. Give me my space cough. I need well, it. I want it? I gotta have it. Uh, next point. Point number three. Lack of communication, updates, and silence around the current state of compatible. I'm sorry, competitive. Words are difficult, or crucible in general. Point number four, lack of vendor gear refreshes that were provided to us in year one, right? Where's the vendor gear refreshes? We basically get the same stuff with different roles. Give us different, whatever, not getting into it. So Vanguard, Crucible, Gambit, they were all stealthily removed when it all shifted into Forsaken. I guess it's because they thought we'd get random roles. We don't need new gear, whatever. I don't agree, but moving on. Again, content expectations from year one that were not communicated in year two. Next point, not having year one armor updated to year two standards, meaning the really, really cool gear that you had to earn by doing escalation protocol and using the key to open the chest. Yeah, it was never brought up to year two standards. Can you get it? Yes. Can you bring it up to the same light level? Yes, but you can't put perks on it. You can't put elemental resistances on it. WTF, Destiny. WTF. Um, where we at? Where we at? Okay. Yeah, okay. So basically, not coming up to year two standards, diluting the loot pool, making all gear that we earned and played for in year one completely obsolete. And that includes Eververse items that some people actually paid money for, right? Less than three weeks away from new season with no details on what's changing. They keep saying, yes, season of the Drifter, season of the Drifter, season of the Drifter. We're going to have a new Gambit mode. We're going to have new Gambit Islands. Is that it? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Gambit. Gambit's amazing. And we get some more lore on the Drifter. I love lore. But come on, Destiny. Give me more content. Um, da, da, da. Assuming the season and Joker's Wild are a week apart, less than four weeks away from the new DLC with no details. Also, Crucible Labs, we've already discussed this, not doing it again. Exotic drop rates, still an issue for many. Now for me, I've got every exotic in the game except the two raid exotics, the Thousand Voices and the Anarchy. Those are the only weapons I don't have in the game, right? As far as exotics and same thing with armor. I've got all the armors, right? So people like me that have good RNG when it comes to that, great. But other people, I've talked to some people in the Destiny community that were on a fire team of mine when we were doing the raid. They still only have three or four forsaken exotics after all this time. Wow. Like, I genuinely felt bad for them. Here I am complaining about my 19th prospector, and they don't even have all the gear themselves yet, you know? Um, catalysts, all but abandoned. Enough said. 
Where are they at? Need more? Got to have them? Want them? Everybody needs them. RNG titles. We've been there. Lots of YouTubers complaining about it. Lots of community complaining about it. If you're going to have a title, that title should not be tied to RNG. Titles should be earned, not gotten haphazardly, I guess, is a good way to say it. Like, um, again, I don't have the thousand voices. I've done flawless raids. I've done many, many raids. I've done everything I need to do in the gaming study. But because I don't have the ship, no, I'm sorry, I have the ship. Because I don't have the sparrow, I don't get a title. Seriously? Anyway, no strike loot. The nightfall rewards are a joke compared to D1. Uh, I can see where he's coming from. I, on the other hand, don't completely agree because there's a lot of specific nightfall loot that's really good. The pulse rifle is really good. The the nightfall exclusive pulse rifle. The um the shotgun. Oh my god, what's the name of the shotgun that glows when you kill people? That thing's amazing. Right? It's aesthetically gorgeous, and it's actually quite practical, right? For one-shots in the Crucible, that's my go-to shotgun for the Crucible, right? So I can see what he's saying for most of the loot, but there are some really good things you can get from Nightfall exclusive drops. I mean, let's be honest, right? So 50-50 on that. <clears throat> His last point right here is complete regression on developer interactions from last year, Chris Barrett, uh, Hamrick, Crucible team, etc. Remember when we actually heard from them all? Remember the development videos, the exotic tuning passes. Remember Hamrick saying more frequent patches, sandbox updates when actions show the direct opposite, right? He goes on to continue. I love Bungie and Destiny, and I defend them throughout all of year one. Same. But with the issues above and the looming threat of being independent after the support from VV and High High Moon after Penumbra, I have serious concerns for the future of the franchise and their ability to deliver content. This strip feed method of DLC isn't working either, and they have the support of the two other studios. You have companies like Ubisoft, Respawn, Bioware, being completely open and transparent about everything on their games, including direct conversations with developers. Bungie seems to have already forgotten that we enjoyed that level of interaction last winter slash spring heading into Warmind. The roadmap last year included a crazy amount of quality of life updates. Where are those now? The roadmap this year is a season, content, and DLC. Where are the quality of life updates? What's going on? What are we to expect? <laughs> okay, this isn't me. This is him. There's still a ton up fixing <laughs> that needs to happen in D2. I'm guessing you meant ton of fixing. That needs to happen in D2. Bungie, this is not okay. I just can't defend you anymore. And honestly, most of his points, they're right on. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're exactly valid, right. which I thought yeah. would be interesting to bring up because it's something that, unless you're on Reddit, you don't know that people are actually trying to get this to Bungie's attention. And it's it's frustrating hearing other people say your frustrations. Now, I play Destiny every day and it is my main game. It is the one that I, you know, I go to to just play. I play Crucible or PvE just to enjoy the game. But seeing these listed, these are some of the frustrations that I know that I have. Um, I'm guessing you guys definitely have some of these as well. We've discussed the Crucible Labs, the Trials, the Faction Rallies, like you were saying, uh, Respawn. The faction rallies need to come back. I know people were frustrated again because it was a repetitive grind going into Lost Sectors and getting tokens or blowing up barrels in Lost Sectors and getting tokens. <laughs> you know, there was always... That's what I didn't understand. The community always found a way to maximise those tokens and really grind out that And then they loop. had to patch them. And like... they patch it. <laughs> and the, It frustrates the community. Why not embrace that? You know, I didn't understand that. The The lack of gear is one thing. Now, I know it was towards the end of Destiny 1 when they just showered us with loot. But where I play the game, you know, a good couple of hours every day, I hardly get any bounties for the enhancement course. I get maybe one or two to drop, but that's a day. And if I go and do the spider bounties, like you said earlier, I could get five or six per character but i've got to go and do that i've got that's out of my way that's not what i've got planned for today you know i want to play crimson doubles today so i want to do that stuff and still earn those enhancement cores but i can't and i don't understand why you can't 
do the stuff that you love and earn those things like mod components are so hard to come by yes you can now buy them from ada but then there isn't enough ways for you to get them apart from getting them from banshee and turning in gunsmith material but you turn in a hundred for a gun that you may or may not get a mod on or may not get a mod to drop with the gun they need to shower people with a lot more stuff like the exotics i found over christmas i was playing less and less because i was spending more time with family but if i didn't log on for for about three or four days and then played i got an exotic drop and i think i played four or five times over a three-week period over christmas and every time i logged on and every time i did like uh, a bounty or one of the powerful rewards i would get an exotic drop and previous to that i'd be playing 30 40 hours a week constantly and not get the one i'd mask log on over christmas after a hiatus of about four days and i get an exotic i don't understand it they don't reward you for playing the game that they want you to play you should be able to get exotic drops raining from the sky if you've got you've put the time into that game there should be not like you play for five hours and you're guaranteed a drop but if you've played for five hours you should at least get a sniff of something you know especially with the random rolls on the exotics that you can get i mean my one-eyed mask isn't perfect i'd like something with better targeting on it or of I haven't got an enhanced perk on it. I'd like something like that. And, you know, with some of the others that you can, like with the Insurmountable Skullfort, the one the Zer was selling, he sold it with the causing damage with your melee, gives you more right. super. That's perfect yeah, synergy. Yeah, no, that, that was synergy. God roll. Yeah. But he doesn't sell God rolls. Why doesn't he sell God rolls? He needs to sell God rolls. He needs to be a reason why he is there they've kind of neglected him like you know the um in destiny one you could get the needles and you could re-roll your exotic gear that would be fantastic to bring it back now yeah, if yeah. they implemented that you'd have to go and gather resources during the week you didn't know which resource he'd want when he comes so say he wanted the data lace you then spend hours going farming that to then give it to him to then get the needles to then re-roll your stuff. They need to shower people with more stuff, you yeah. know, more mods, more enhancement cores, more exotics. You know, they shower you with all the random rolls of these different guns, which is fantastic, but they need to make sure that people want to play their game and get more stuff. Because I like building certain builds for like my titan my hunt to my warlock to do different things yeah now i've got one specific loadout that i use for gambit for my titan and a separate one for crucible i struggle to get the mod components to buy the different mods to then put on to the different armor pieces and the, the different guns because you don't get showered with that amount of loot even for the amount of hours that I put in, I guess... I think the... it's ridiculous. Go, going to those mods that you're talking about, I just wanted to stop and, 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 and say something real quick, is yeah. I think it's ludicrous how many weapon parts you need for a mod. You need 250 weapon parts for one mod. And that's at the cheapest mod. When it goes up by five increments every time you buy one, it gets even worse. But if once a week I just want to grab a mod, that, that clears out all the stuff I've done the, the, the previous week. You know, I can't get ahead whenever I play Destiny because just just buying these these weapon mods, right, so that I can get a, a chance to roll one of the good, one of the better mods, right, whether it be from 801 or whether it be from 99. I'm sorry, 40. Why did I say 99? I'm sorry. From 801 or uh, 40, the gunsmith. No matter which one you do, it's going to cost a ridiculous amount of weapon parts. And basically... Yeah. You can only pick one, right? I mean, if you're a really diehard player, yeah, you can probably farm them out as much as you want if you play a lot, 
right? But me, I get on and I play after work until I go to bed every day. And by doing by playing that maximum amount of time that I have, I can get usually one weapon mod from A to 1 in the course of a week. I think that's way too high. And again, not listening to the community, we've been saying for at least two seasons, remove enhancement cores from weapon upgrades. You know, we don't need them. We already got to get world materials. We already have to spend glimmer. We don't need enhancement cores to do this stuff, right? Yeah. Enhancement I'll, cores should only be used for the mod itself, not increasing the weapon's light level. I'm at know? the point of my characters are all at 650. The guns that I'm using at this point are all 650. But I've got a whole vault that is crammed full of guns that maybe want to be brought up in the future that I'm just keeping. The same with armor. I'm not wasting my enhancement cores on because I've got so little and I want to save them for the next DLC. But if I was showered with those enhancement cores and those mods, I'd spend more time playing the game because I'd want to go and do all my powerful rewards for that week for that character. But I don't. I just go on and just play the game how I want to play, which is nice. I don't have to do those powerful rewards at this point. I will do come the next season. But if I could level everything up to 650 ready for the next season, that's what I would do because I did that in D1 because it wasn't that much to infuse all my gear up to the highest level. Yeah, you, you didn't, didn't have to wait cores. for an enhancement core. And it's not like one enhancement core per weapon. It's like two or three. And the same with the armor. It's like either shower with the stuff or don't and take away that restraint because again i think that's another frustration for people is that they don't want to waste their time playing that game farming for something that they're going to get one of where they can go and play a different game that isn't this and enjoy it more because they're not being forced to do what this game is. i know this is part i mean look the, it's yeah. like it's like D1. We didn't need that for D1, right? You have Anthem coming out. You can make weapons, absolutely. You can change the weapons that you have to to upgrade those into better weapons, absolutely. But it just requires the the currency of the game, and um, you got to get a blueprint, right? But once you get the blueprint, you have you have it forever, right? So you have to get a blueprint. You have to get the world currency, and you have to get whatever uh, mod components you need out in the wild, right? And it's not enhancement cores. It's like like weapon. It's like a you know, just just collectibles in the world that aren't even hard to find, and maybe an enemy drop every now and again, right? But it's not it's not that intensive. And then like another game like Monster Hunter, right? Yes, you have to grind monsters to get weapons, right? But most of these weapons require one one special item, and hey, boom, you got the weapon, right? That's it. You don't need to keep going out and getting that same item over and over and over and over again for the same weapon, <laughs> you know. Once you have it, you have it. You need to invest a little bit of time in it to, to get it to the max level that you want to, but you shouldn't have to grind for one specific thing that takes forever to get and that you okay. need so many of on top of that. Because the weapon core, you get 10 levels, right? 10, 10 levels for the, um, and this is assuming it's max light, right? So you have the uh, masterwork itself, right? The first two levels don't cost any enhancement cores. The next one is one. The one after that, I think, is two the one after that i think is three and then three and then three and then four and then five. five yeah yeah so that's 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 a lot of that's a lot of cores for one weapon just to up that's not even to get it to the max light that's just just to to increase the damn uh uh masterwork you know yeah. it's insane but the thing is if they showered you with more enhancement cores then you'd find a lot more people experimenting with guns, masterworking them. Because I've got several versions of like Misfits that I think, oh, one's got range, one's got stability. Which one's going to be the best? I want to try it, the, the max, you know, masterwork, but I can't, or I can, but then all my masterwork courses have gone. Yeah. You know, and I need that for if I'm playing Iron Banner this week and I want to masterwork something up because it's really good, then. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the point that the community's at is that they are saving these things because they're precious, but it doesn't need to be. It's yeah, it, 
it's it's not that kind. We didn't need it in year one. We needed 10 per weapon in year one. A base, 10. That's it. You want a master work a weapon? Cool. Here's 10. Boom. Done. Right? They were trying to say, oh, well, it's an investment in the weapon. Every time you do it, it gets a little better. Okay. I I can see that. But when the weapon gets better, it shouldn't increase the amount of weapon cores to level it up. Right? That that to me doesn't make any sense. You want to make it? You want to give us ten levels? Okay, cool. Each level should be one enhancement core, not not one and then one and then two and then three and then three and then three and then five, right? Yeah. That's that's too much, you know. Another point that this guy's made was the the lack of communication, the updates and the silence around the different parts of the game. Now somebody's asked on Reddit, submitted by Parrot STD. Uh, we are collecting your feedback, quotation marks, may very well be true. But listening is only one side of the conversation. We need regular two-way discussions with devs and designers. We need to know how our feedback is being put to use. So Bungie have responded on Reddit. Thanks for the feedback and keep it coming. Over the last year, we've been adding more developer commentaries to our commun- communications whether it be in TWABs, Patch Notes, Vidocs, or Dev Insights. We've also been hosting community summits where we invite various members of the community, forum posters, streamers, YouTubers, etc., who represent larger groups of players. On top of that, we do host playtests at Bungie with various players invited to lend their feedback. I don't know if there ever could be a two-way conversation with the community as it would be a single person speaking to a sea of community members from various backgrounds. In any case, we're looking to prove this. Now, the the problem that I've seen is, yeah, they, they've they communicated quite a lot recently in the TWABs, but they're communicating on Twitter or they're communicating on Reddit, but that's not then being put back into the TWAB. And I'll give you an example. I don't know if you guys knew this. DMG, who works for Bungie, has tweeted recently, Valor bonuses are currently active through to Tuesday. I didn't know that. It wasn't in the 12 as far as I'm concerned. I don't know if you guys saw that. I saw it only because it popped up. I think right after they pushed the patch this week, it popped up and said, hey, there's, there's some Valor. Go get your Valor. Which is the other reason I was jumping into Crimson Double so much. But yeah, that's that's part of the problem. Is I mean, getting back to your talk before about the the economy problem. Yeah, there's there's too many places to communicate. You know, there's, yeah. there's Reddit, there's there's the TWAB, there's Twitter, there's all these different forms. And, and it's and good I understand all these people are asking them questions on those things, but they need to then think we need to hone this and get this in one specific place. Even though we're answering questions over there, we need to copy and paste and put that here and say. This is the place that everything's going to come to and everybody can see and everybody can be informed because not everybody's going to be on Twitter and not everybody's going to be on Reddit. You know, it's that's the problem I think that they're having. I didn't see a, uh, a banner pop up. It may have just been one of those things that I think, oh, I've just pushed past and not read it. But I'll read the TWAB every week. So if they told me on, I think it was Thursday or Friday when it came out, that there'd be a double valor weekend going through till Tuesday, that'd be something I'd know about. Yeah. And that's, and again, I mean, it's gotta be difficult dealing with a, you know, a community of this size again on, on three separate platforms. And now with the Korean bill being a little bit different, it's basically four separate platforms in addition to developing your game and everything else. I know the guys over at Des- uh, there's a site called destiny roundup.com and they're, you know, attempting to go and put these put these things together again, and you know, it's another fan made effort trying to figure out what you know Cosmo or Deej or DMG or someone has said, and going, hey, there's a forum post here, there's a Reddit post here, you know, trying to bring that all together. But that's you know, I appreciate that someone's out there doing it, but I I, I almost wish Bungie would take you know take this back and say, hey, or or heck, hire these guys and say, hey, you're doing a good job collecting this, do it for us, you know, just bring all this disparate information together. There's so many. That's sort of almost the the beauty of the problem with the with the Destiny community of creators is there's so much cool stuff out there. There's so many amazing sites out there that make the game better and then improve it, give you information and stats and news and but finding these is like unless you're on Twitter and happen to see someone 
mention it or see it in a Reddit post. Like, there's no good way to find this stuff. I would, I would love to see Bungie do a better job just, you know, highlighting some of that because there's so much cool stuff like BrayTech.org and the DestinyRoundup.com and the DestinySets.com site. There's so much cool stuff out there that's like, you may play this game 40 hours a week and just never stumble across just because you don't happen to see it. It's like, you know, I, I wish there was a better way to, to bring some of this to light. They had something uh, not too long ago that they said you could only get from the random, uh, the the prismatic matrix. Hey, the, the last word is only going to show up in the prismatic matrix. You got to get it. And this past week, was it? Or the week before? It was a buyable skin in it's the Everest week, store. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, it's week. this week. It's, it, you can just go and get it. Not even with cash. You can just use bright dust, which I'm a fan of because I have like 30,000 bright dust. But yeah. still, they said it was only going to be available in inside the uh the prismatic matrix and then they made it available to buy literally I'm, about a week i'm off glad that they yet. did yeah i'm glad that they did don't get me wrong because it's a cool skin i believe everybody deserves to have it but why come but, out and say what they did previously that's exactly I don't understand that yeah exactly I agree that's with you. my biggest hang up with them right now it's like oh we're not going to nerf any weapons from this point forward we learned our lesson from d1 no more nerfing how many weapons have they nerfed already how many armors have they nerfed, right? They said, and I quote, we're not going to nerf any more weapons. We're just going to bring other things up to that level. They said that and almost immediately went against it. It's like, stop saying you're going to do or not do something and then changing your mind. You make the community not want to trust you. And it's a shame because I like playing Destiny. I like the PvE element. I like going out and kill, killing hordes of enemies for no other reason than personal satisfaction. I'm a huge fan. But I hate when they say they're going to do something or not do something and then change their minds. It's like, stand behind what you say. Because if you don't do that, nobody's going to trust you. Nobody's going to be like, uh, Destiny said that this DLC is coming out. It's going to have all these cool things. That's going to be awesome. No, because now the community can't trust half the stuff you say. you know. And that hurts me because it's a good game. I want more people to play. But because of the things that they're doing, it's actually hurting them, not helping them. you know. Yeah. And it's, it's such a shame, man. The the other thing that he points out is the RNG titles for like I mean Wayfarer, my God, you had to have made sure that you've done escalation protocol and got every piece of armor and then managed to get the drop from the Nightfall, which was the Nightfall exclusive, which took me a hell of a long time to get the rocket launcher from Not Chris, and that was the only thing that I was waiting for to get up that um, RNG title. The, the law book, I'm missing quite a few pages. I think it's from Visiting the Queen. Now, every week that has come up for quite some time, I visited the Queen and they say that you're meant to have guaranteed get a page from, I think it's every third week from visiting her. But I've only got three pages and I know I visited her more than that. So... I'm not going to be able to complete that until they've unlocked all those pages and you can just go and play and just get yeah. it from like opening chests and things. Right. Pretty much anything RNG based at this point, I've given up on because <laughs> my RNG is absolutely horrible. I mean, anything I... that involves me getting, you know, again, you know, I'm, I'm 60, 60 plus clears into escalation protocol. I got the shotgun to drop once for me recently. I mean, there's still exotics I'm missing. There's still stuff. Uh, yeah, anything that involves RNG, I'm just, I'm just convinced it's just never going to happen for me. I'm just, I've stopped trying for a lot of this stuff. I much the rather titles, have some. I don't understand some path to success versus just hoping. Yeah, I mean the titles, they're purely cosmetic. They mean nothing other than you know, you know, you getting to gloat. That's something you think they want to give to the community. You put all this effort in. Here's the thing, but like I know uh, Jack is looking for his 18 Kelvins to drop. That's just never going to drop. I mean, I think he's given up on it too. There's so many things where it's like you're so close, and you're just you know, rolling the dice, seeing if today is the day you get the thing you're trying to get. It's like, there's the chase, but there comes a point where you're just going to stop chasing because it's just, you're beating yeah. your head against a wall for, yeah. you know, not even a reward, just, just a title. It's not even anything you can use like, in the game. Just a, I was unaware that the Varric's Law that you can collect, you get a higher drop rate, or you can only collect it on a week where the Tangled Shore is the Flashpoint. Yeah, I d didn't realize that until. <laughs> so, you know, I spent the last couple of days when I wasn't doing Crimson Doubles 
go and do in Lost Sectors, doing the story mission on the Tangled Shore, doing public events, and slowly I've got like the last three or four pages to drop. But that shouldn't be RNG. That should just be if you're there and you're playing the game on the Tangled Shore, you should be able to get those from drops. I don't, I don't understand that bit. I really don't. And the same with, I think it's the decayed stuff. You have to go to, you have to wait to the decayed mission to forge the uh, Ace of Spades comes up in the daily rotation. And then if you play it over and over again, when you open those chests going through that mission, it will give you the law for Cade. Now, yeah. why? Why not it just be available randomly from chests out in the world? Well, it doesn't make any sense. In that sense. particular instance, in that particular instance, it's because it's tied to that event directly. So I could see that, right? Yes, but I played through that mission. I got my um, hand cannon. But I didn't get all the law, which then oh. I had they have to go back and do it again. Yeah, well, you could do but, it on a different and, character and get more lore. Because, I mean, I did it on all my characters. I got most of the lore. Granted, I still didn't get all of the lore, right? But you got three characters to do. Maybe that's how they justified it. I see your point. Don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not taking away from your point. But I can see some logic. But unless you that. know that or you go away and research that, it's not something that's out there that's communicated to people if you want this, this is what is where you can get it from. And I thought that was the whole idea of having that triumph book is yeah. that you go on to an emblem and it will say, you can get this from doing escalation protocol or this ghost you can get from doing this activity. You look at those law books and it doesn't say anything. It doesn't say you have to repeat this story mission once it comes up in the daily rotation or right. you can only get this Varix law when you're on this specific week it needs that's uh, some of the communication they need to put into the game you know and i know they posted in the last couple of days that they're going to put more notifications up on the screen dmg again right. put up ne expect next week in destiny this is going to happen and he posted that on twitter but again the, they're missing the point of that they need to, and they need a central hub for the communication or to collate all this information. And I think they miss things, like the double valor thing. That would have been really nice to put in the TWAB. Again, I know for like the last three weeks, we've talked about Crimson Days. We did the, this is what's coming, how to get the stuff. Then last week, we just went over a few of the extra bits that they put into it. And then we've surmised it this week in our podcast. But in each space of those TWABs, if they'd have put, we're going to do a double valor weekend people might have been more inclined to jump in or make preparations to jump into crucible for that week but they haven't so it's you don't know whether it's kind of an off the cuff thing that they suddenly thought ah let's do that and again with that tweet that he put out he's saying that there's not going to be double valor for iron banner now people have come to expect in the last couple of iron banners that it's been double valor and that's how they've got more people into play. So I don't understand why they're now saying no double XP. It doesn't make any sense what they're doing in regards to that. Sorry. Maybe they're just having a lot on their plate. I don't know. I'm not defending them. You, you're right. I, I, I completely agree. But I don't know. I'm not on their side to know exactly what they have going on. Maybe there's a lot of stuff. I mean, it's 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 not an excuse, but what if they just didn't think about it? <laughs> you know what? You know, somebody just dropped the ball, and somebody's like, "Hey, is there a double valor?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, there is." Okay, yeah, oh, of course, yeah. You know, <laughs> just he just dropped the but ball. Dropping the ball for three weeks in the twab. I I mean, doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. But I'm really trying to. I'm trying hard. I'm reaching. I'm only saying this because I I know that when Iron Banners come up. They've gone, oh, don't forget it's double valor for that week and triple oh, yeah. valor at the weekend. They've been quite open with that communication. Yeah. And it just seems like an afterthought to suddenly go, oh, we'll put a tweet out or we'll put a message up on the screen. Imagine if you hadn't played this weekend. You wouldn't see that message. You didn't know about it. You're not on Twitter. You're not following these developers. And you've missed that. But it's something you might have wanted to do to grind out your rhetorics for this season now that the redricks can be the, the five resets can be grinded out in any season it may be something that you wanted to know or maybe you'd pinned your hopes on the iron banner because it's in history 
the last couple been double and triple and if you didn't see that tweet you wouldn't know that it's not on it's just i don't know i still like the game (laughs) (laughs) all right well thanks for joining us this week this has been parody i'm parody p-e-r-o-t-y on xbox live and twitter you can find night demon n-i-t-e-d-e-m-o-n on xbox live and twitter you can find no respawn that's n-o the number one respawns plural I N R L on Xbox Live and nowhere else because he's antisocial and doesn't love you. You can email us <laughs> feedback to two titans and a hunter at hotmail.com. That's T W O T I T A N S and a hunter, all spelled out at hotmail.com. We are number two titans underscore hunter on Twitter. You can find us on YouTube by searching two titans and a hunter. We're also on Facebook. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, and your podcatcher. Put two Titans and a Hunter into Google. You'll find us. We'll put links in the show notes. Until next week. That was good fun. Yeah, yes. good times. Always good fun with me. I mean, you it guys. Is. I meant to say you guys. Did I not say you guys? 